All right, hello. Um, today we are going to be talking about how to use mole relationships with our stoichiometry. And so stoichiometry um, is a fancy way for us to talk about the dimensional analysis um, that we've been doing um, previously in our class, so it's um, using mathematical relationships. And so the two kind of questions that our mole ratios will help us solve is how much of a reactant will I need for a reaction to actually happen and us to produce a certain amount of something? And then like, how much product are we actually going to make? So um, in some ways, this is getting to be similar to how we do recipes um, in cooking. Um, we're going to see how much you need of each thing relative to one another to produce different amounts of products. Um, so we're going to talk about this idea of a mole ratio. So what is a mole ratio? Um, so mole ratios tell you the relationship from one substance to another. Um, and in a chemical equation, we need to balance it first because we know matter has to be conserved. But a mole ratio is going to actually be the relationship between the coefficients. So if we had um, this, remember this coefficient is one, it's implied to be one. So if we have one mole of this acetone right here, we need to react it with four moles of oxygen gas in order to produce the products. And we'll make three moles of CO2 and three moles of H2O. Okay, so we're gonna use the coefficients um, of the balanced equation as our mole ratio. So those are gonna be the coefficients of balanced equation. Okay, so in math class we do um, relationships, like if I was gonna say there's a one, um, to three ratio, it would be like one um, C3H6O to three uh, CO2s, okay? In chemistry, we're gonna write these as fractions instead. So you're gonna write one mole of the C3H6O of the acetone to every three moles of CO2. Or you could write it as an opposite fraction three moles of CO2 produced for every one mole of C3H6O that is put into the reaction, okay? And this is gonna be important to us because um, when we see things written out in this, these um, fractions, we can see how they're gonna be useful as we start to do some equations um, and some calculations. So our question, so I want you to write down your balanced equation and then you wanna write down the um, sample question as well. So this question is how many moles of CO2, that's what we're looking for, are produced when 0 0.45 moles of acetone undergo com combustion. So we're gonna start with our given information, the 0 0.45 moles of acetone, C3H6O. And it is important that we write our unit and it's also important that we write a label. So the unit is mole, and then the label is C3H6O. It's basically like moles of what? Okay, well, it's moles of acetone, so we have to write that acetone in. Because now we're interested in the relationship between the acetone and the carbon dioxide, okay? We have a one to three relationship. So what we can do is like we always do with dimensional analysis, we're gonna drag our unit to the bottom, moles of C3H6O. And how many? Well, it's one mole, coefficient one, to every three moles of CO2, okay? And so you can see how my moles will cancel out, moles of C3H6O on the numerator and the denominator, and I'm left with moles of CO2. To solve this problem numerically, I'm gonna take my um, 0 0.45 moles and I'm gonna multiply it by three moles, okay? And that gives us 1.35 moles of CO2, okay? So that's our basic um, problem that we're gonna work with. 
So the next thing that we're gonna do is we are gonna expand upon the mole maps that we've seen before. So I'll start with what's new. And what's new is this bridge connector here. This is gonna be called a mole ratio. And what it is, is the coefficient, or the numbers in front, of a balanced equation. Okay. And that's going to help us convert from moles of one substance, in this case labels A, to moles of another substance, in this case labeled B. We've already talked about the relationships um, that are otherwise on this, but let's go through them just in case. So between moles and mass, we're going to use molar mass. And that's found on the periodic table. And it's a certain number of grams in each mole. So for example, for carbon, it's 12.01 grams per mole of carbon. Okay, so you just look on the periodic table to figure out how many grams it is. For the relationship between moles and particles, let's first define particles. So a particle would be something that like atoms or molecules, okay? And so the relationship between moles and particles is a number, it's Avogadro's number. Okay, and that number is 6.022 times 10 to the 30, uh, 23rd particles in one mole. It's how many particles are in one mole. Our last relationship is going to be between moles of a substance and the volume of gas of that substance at STP. So STP means standard temperature and pressure. And it works for every gas at these conditions of standard temperature and pressure. And so that tells us that it's 22.4 liters of space in one mole of any gas at standard temperature and pressure. So you can fill out these other ones on the other side too, but I wanna make sure you have this expanded mole map because that's gonna help us understand what we can do. So now if you're given information about the mass of a reactant, you can figure out how many moles it has, and then you can use the balanced equation to figure out how you can get moles of a different substance. And then from there, you could count information about the mass of that new substance, about the number of particles of that new substance, or if the substance is um, a gas at standard temperature and pressure, about the volume of that substance, okay? So we're gonna try that in the next example. In the next example, we're gonna go from mass to moles to moles to mass. So let's try it. This is uh, called a gram to gram conversion um, because it's one of the ones that's um, in our expanded mole map. And so we have our balanced equation. It's the same equation from our original um, problem. So you can like label this example number two if you'd like to. So this says how many grams of water, H2O, are produced from the combustion of 150 grams of acetone. So the first thing that I like to do is just put my given information over one. 150 grams, that's my unit, and my label, acetone, C3H6O, put it over one. Okay, so now let's flip back to that last page, and we're gonna see how we're starting in the grams of acetone. We're gonna need to convert to moles, do a mole ratio relationship, and then go from moles to mass of our water. Okay, so let's put that plan in place. So we are going to do grams of C3H6O to moles of C3H6O to moles of water to get our final grams of water. So this, I just like to write a game plan so that I can remember what are our steps that we need to take, okay? So we took our given over one, and now we need to go from grams to mole. To go from grams to mole here, we're gonna use our molar mass, okay? And that's in a unit of G slash MOL. Our molar mass of acetone, C3H6O, is gonna be three times the molar mass of carbon, 12.01. 
and then it's going to be six times the molar mass of um, hydrogen 1.01 .01, and one times the molar mass of oxygen 16.00. So all of these are in grams per mole. And when you add them up, you get 58.09 grams per mole of acetone. So let's use that as the next conversion factor. Okay. So since our grams is in the numerator here, we're going to put it in the denominator here, C3H6O, and it's going to be 58.09 grams, and that's going to be what's equal to one mole of the acetone. So now we're going to go from moles to mole. How are we going to do that? Well, we are going to use our coefficients, our mole ratio. Okay, so what's our mole ratio? Well, if there's no coefficient, it's an implied one. And then for water, here it is, it has a coefficient of three. Okay, so our mole relationship is a one to three mole ratio. So we have our moles of C3H6O in the numerator, so that's going to get brought down to the denominator. And it is 1, so I'll put that in. And then we've got 3 moles of the water, and that'll go in the uh, numerator. Okay. So now what we're going to do is our last step from moles to grams again. Again, that's going to be our molar mass. For water, the molar mass is 18.02 grams. That's going to go in the numerator so that our one mole of water can get canceled out in the denominator. Okay. You can see how my units will now cancel out. Grams of acetone in the numerator cancel out grams of acetone in the denominator. The moles of acetone will cancel out. The moles of water will cancel out. And I'm left with my final unit of grams of H2O. Okay. When I put this on my calculator, I get 139.6 grams of H2O are produced from the combustion of 150 grams of acetone. So this is an example of how you might use this problem. This was a gram to gram conversion, um, but you'll see things in all different ways. So you might start with the number of particles and go to mass of a different substance. Um, you might start with mass of one substance and then measure the volume of gas that should be produced of a, of a product. Um, it doesn't matter like what you start with. You will always need to go through your mole relationship here to compare ratios in a balanced equation. So you need to use your mole ratio in order to compare two different substances together. Um, so that's really important. And so now we're gonna give you some time to do some practice. Thanks so much.